I haven't seen you in a while. Yeah, man, it's good to see you. Likewise, man. You recorded the guitar part. Oh, yes. Yeah, it sounded really awesome. We're ready for the flute. Oh, uh, well, I can come over tonight after my orchestra concert. That's all I got going on. Okay, great. We'll be waiting for you. I even invited Jennifer tonight. She's coming over? She's cute. It'll make you play better. <sighs> all right, let's do it. All right, let's go. I'm down. So how have you been? All right, all right. Araceli says I spend too much time at the studio, but I'm happy with it. When can I hear that song? I got the track on my phone. You want to see it? Yeah. And so, I'm thinking we could probably get it on like... I came from your house. Does your father have a gun? No, I've got to go see. <laughs> Mama! We've got to get out of here. No, don't go. Be quiet, they don't know we're here. It's the narcos. They're mad at my father for not working in the fields. <gasps> Thank you so much. Thank you. I wish I had your courage to leave your family to help them. Maybe you just love more than me. Maybe I'm just selfish. When I make it over there, I'm going to send money for his treatment. You know, he could have been walking with it by now. And Miguelito, he'll get a chance to go to college and develop his talent. And I want to help my nieces too. Thank you. Thank you so much. Hi, Mama. You don't have to do this. You've done so much for us already. No, but I want to, Mija. Of course. Thank you. I love you. Me voy, amor. Tal vez no sé por qué me voy. Tal vez mi vida nunca podré. Me voy sin ti, de 
pero algún día volveré y jamás te dejaré. Espérame, espérame. Are you Belisa de Barcelona? Yes, and this is my son Miguel. I'm Ricardo. I'll be taking you to the other side. Did you bring plenty of water? As much as we can carry. That's fine, we'll restock up ahead. Did they tell you about the price change? Price change? No, listen, we were told it was $800 for the both of us. Uh, there's been problems, robberies, assaults. It's becoming more and more dangerous. It'll be a thousand. What? <sighs> Are you crazy? It took us four years to gather this much. What else do you have of value? What do you have no, in here, huh? No, no. How can you do this to your own people? You're a very, very beautiful woman. Perhaps we could work something out. I see. No, we can do this on our own. Thank you very much. And those people, those people, they thought that they could do it on their own, too. We buried with the vultures and the coyotes left behind. Coyotes? Do you mean the beasts in the field or you and your friends? I'll take you to the safe house. But after that, you're on your own. Mama, he's not going to take us? Don't worry, mijo. We can do this on our own. We don't need him. Come over here. Hola. Hola. Hi. Hello. Miguelito. Hijo mío. Hey. What's your name? Diego Sandoval. Oh, are you here with your parents? No. I come with friends. Oh, are they here? No, I I got lost from them. You mean you're here by yourself? Have you eaten? Yes, yesterday. Yesterday? You mean no one here has offered you anything to eat? I guess it is every man and child for himself, isn't it? Eat. Do you have family on the other side? Mm. Mm. No, but my father's friend said to give this to the American Border Police, that they would help me. Not like the police in my town. La Migra? Help you? We'll do our best to stay away from them. They'll pack us up in a truck and take us. 
What's that? It's my flute. It was a gift from my mother. Oh, this is my guitar. My mom got it for me too. You know what, boys? Let's get out of here. Let's get going. Come with us. Hola, this is our camp. You need to go find another one. What are you doing out here? Oh. Do you have any food you could share with us? You have such nice clothes and you're looking for food? Look, there's only enough for the children. Just go, good luck. You're traveling to the other side and you have no man with you? Where's your money? <laughs> so you're thieves and you steal from women and children. We have no money. There is no money. Just go. Go. Leave us alone, please. Come on. I'm bored. Play some music. Let's yeah. dance. Oh. <laughs> Donna, I think he's hurt. Are you okay? I'm going to put him in the back seat. I'll get the ambulance to meet us. I'm thinking we could probably get it on, like, 89.5, 91.1, and 91.2. And I think the guys at 93.6, they're really on to something. They're definitely down to work something out with us. Hey, man, you listening? I'm telling you, we'll get the song on the radio. Yeah, man. Sorry. It's all good, man. Very beautiful. 
Miguel. When I was close to 13 years of age, my mom married an American and we migrated to the USA. He adopted us, um, the three youngest children, and it took a little over a year. And after that, about a year and a half, we moved from Mexico to El Paso. I left family, friends, my house, my street, my food, my groceries, my language. I my family, I, I left everything behind. I remember so vividly going to the grocery store and just being so frustrated because neither my mom or my brother or myself spoke English. So we're trying to read the containers of the food and we were hoping so hard that most containers were transparent. So at least we could see what's in there to buy our groceries. But no, most containers are not transparent. So we would try to read and try to figure out what was in there. But many times we would just take groceries home that we had no clue what was in there. And that's how we were introduced to cottage cheese, which we had never seen in Mexico before. We were introduced to um, nacho cheese, yellow cheese, and which we don't use in Mexico uh, unless it's imported from the US. We moved from a, a home, a small home, into a teeny little studio here in the US. We couldn't afford better. People in this country don't imagine how much better life is here, at least financially and educational opportunities. My mom would do it again. She would bring us again because there's so many more opportunities here. As a little girl, no, I did not want to come. I did not understand what my mom was talking about. I, why would I want to leave my country? I was fine. I, I was not starving. You know, we were humble, but we, we had what we needed. So DACA is a program that was created by President Obama called the Deferred Action for Childhood Arrivals Program. And what DACA is, is it's a constitutional use of prosecutorial discretion. So um, the way that people can best understand what prosecutorial discretion is, is that it's the law enforcement officer's power to decide when to enforce um, a law. So if you've ever been pulled over by a police officer and you were hoping for the best that he give you a warning as opposed to a ticket, then you are relying on his power to decide, his prosecutorial discretion to not give you a ticket and to instead um, give you an opportunity to avoid having to be a part of the criminal justice or the traffic process. Similarly, the President of the United States is the chief law enforcement officer for the United States. And so in that capacity, he was able to explain that his power to decide which cases are a priority for prosecution and which ones aren't for immigration purposes falls squarely within his constitutional authority within the executive branch to decide where the limited use of resources should be directed. And um, he created a program where people could affirmatively request protection from deportation after they had been thoroughly vetted by his administration. And um, that's what DACA is. So it gave them two year protection from deportation and also work authorization after they'd been vetted through the executive departments of Homeland Security's office. It requires Congress to pass a law that allows certain people under whatever circumstances they define to have a pathway to residency and then subsequently citizenship. Um, there is no way to become a resident if you were granted protection from deportation through DACA. And what advocates are asking for at this time is that because we know the program works, because we know that the vetting process was very successful and that people were willing to disclose their information and that they were willing to pay for that benefit, that it should be a policy that Congress can turn into a legal uh, means for giving people some kind of legal status in the United States. And if they so choose to make it a pathway to residency, but no law such as that exists at this time that's ever been passed. Well, I asked my parents where, what hospital I was born in because I was just curious. 
and they told me you were born in Ciudad Juarez. Um, at the time, I didn't really understand what uh, a legal status meant, but I, I just knew I was born in another country. That's all I knew, and I knew I was different. You know, I knew that I was different because I didn't have uh, papeles or papers. I knew I was different, I just didn't feel different. When I was 18, that I, I couldn't able to get any scholarships or a driver's license. I, I knew that it, that was gonna come from an early age, but it wasn't up until I, it, it was, I was 18 that it like directly impacted me. I was enrolled at the El Paso Community College. I, I mean, I was just really going through the motions because DACA, we didn't have DACA yet. So I was just like, well, I'm kind of going to college because I kind of, I grew up here, so it's something that they, that's reiterated to you the whole time, like, you're gonna go to college. I was just doing that and, um, I mean, knowing that if, when I graduate, I'm not gonna be able to get a job. So I just kind of went through it up until like DACA was announced. That's when I kind of started to become a better student and uh, do better in life. So when I was eight years old, I was living in Caracas in Venezuela. My two oldest brothers were both living in El Paso. One was, I believe, attending school. The other one was attending a technical school to become a truck driver. I lived in Venezuela with my mom and my little sister. Unfortunately, my little sister passed away because of an infection to, to, uh, in, in her lungs, uh, which could have been treated better if we were in the United States. After that, my mom became very depressed um, and decided that she wanted to be with all of her kids in one place versus having to migrate back and forth. My mom, uh, we came here by a plane on a tourist visa and shortly after uh, coming to the United States, my mom petitioned for her U.S. green card um, through, through my oldest brother, uh, Sebastian, who is a citizen now. Right before she was eligible to become a U.S. citizen, she actually became very ill. And so we decided because of lack, um, lack of access to health insurance that the best option for her was to move back to our home country, Venezuela, where she would be attended by other family members. Unfortunately, it would mean that I was no longer um, available to apply through her. I did apply in one occasion in 2011 for a green card and showed up to the USCIS officer and was denied. Then I received a letter in the mail about 30 days after saying that I had only a month to leave the country. This was in the eve of my high school graduation. And so it didn't matter how many, high, um, how many college acceptance letters I had with me at that interview. It didn't matter that I had over $100,000 in scholarships from different universities across the country. What mattered at that point was the fact that that dream was no longer attainable. And so I had to fight my right to stay in this country. I had to um, fight in the court specifically. And luckily in 2012, President Obama um, came out with uh, or released the uh, Deferred Action for Childhood Arrivals program, which allowed me to continue my education here in the United States and provided me with protection from deportation. Me voy sin ti, pero algún 
Recuerdos otra vez te besaré. 